understand the structure of the template that can be used in the writing task too, we've taken an example and using that example, we'll try and create an entire essay in the structure of the template that we've created. Let's try and understand the example first. Some people think that the government is wasting money on the arts and that this money could be better spent elsewhere. To what extent do you agree with this? Now it is, please note, it is explicitly asking to what extent do you agree? I have often seen people get confused since they've asked what to what extent do you agree? That means I need to agree in the essay as well. We'll look at this template and the structure and we will address this issue as well as the overall topic itself. Now, your first paragraph should, which would be your introductory paragraph needs an introduction itself. And the apt introduction for any particular task could be a generic statement in terms of, since this topic is on arts, a generic statement on arts could be something as art and the different art forms capture the cultural as well as historical heritage of a country and preservation of art forms is very important for any country. This could be one form in which you can create or state a generic statement pertaining to the topic itself. If you cannot think about a statement per se related to that particular topic, then you can just rephrase the problem statement. For example, it is often argued by various sections of the society that government is needlessly spending resources on the preservation of arts. This statement is essentially capturing whatever this particular topic is. However, it is not doing so using the same language. You need to use your own language, otherwise it may not add up to resulting in any marks. So this could be the first statement or the opening statement of your essay. The second statement or the second part could very well be your opinion. Up front, you need to come out with whatever it is that you need to state. Now remember, that we had earlier seen that you need to be a little positively neutral and positive is the functional word. Thus, you need not be extremely positive and you can just state that in my opinion or in my view or in my belief or I am of the view or I believe that it is very important for any nation to spend certain resources on the preservation as well as development of art forms. Now, upfront, you're writing about that you support the idea that government should spend or allocate certain resources on the arts. And this is exactly what you need to do in this second part, which is your opinion. And you're also being a little positively neutral in terms or in line of the essay itself. The third part of the first paragraph is layout of the essay. Now, this is something that I often say is optional, that you need not necessarily write this in your essay. The reason is, or the layout of the essay, or what do I mean by that is, you can just simply write a statement that this essay will further discuss this topic using relevant arguments and apt arguments. This is just a format of the layout of the essay. Now remember, you can use the layout of the essay sentence whenever you think you are falling short of words or you do not have enough ideas to write down in your essay. This will help you cross the 250 word mark, which you have to maintain on your writing task too. In case if you are not short of ideas, you have plenty of ideas and good ideas, then by all means, there is no need to write the layout of the essay itself. And you can directly move on to the second paragraph and start writing down the ideas that you have. In the second paragraph, you need to upfront start with the main idea or opinion that you have with regards to that particular topic or the reason for the opinion that you have expressed in the previous paragraph. For example, in this case, it could be many art forms, especially in countries such as India, are cultural or are historical or traditional in nature and often require a longer period of time to become profitable or popular. And thus, in this gestation period, it is very important for the government to provide support to the art form as well as the artisan himself. So now, what you're actually doing is providing a certain idea or a reason as to why your opinion is whatever it is. Having done so, you can now combine it with elaboration itself and you were doing that while you were talking about it itself. That if the government does not provide enough support or sustenance to the artisan or the art form in the gestation period, these artisans will stop pursuing these art forms and this may lead to a natural death of the art form itself. 
Now you have not just provided your opinion, but you have also provided a justification as well as an elaboration as to why your opinion matters or why it is important. If you have an example pertaining to this particular topic itself or your idea or opinion itself, please do mention your example. Now the use of example needs to be made very carefully. I've often seen essays in which example itself is larger than the point or the opinion itself. Remember, example just helps you put forth the point or put forth the message that you wish to do. An example is not the point in itself. Thus, your example should be very simple and straightforward. For example, right now we just spoke about there have been certain art forms that have been extinct. So an example in this case could have been that uh, many art forms such as Kalari Payattu or Malakam or Warli art in Maharashtra were almost on the verge of extinction before the government intervened and tried to provide sustenance or support so that they could thrive again. If you do not have an example, you may not write an example at all. It is perfectly fine. Also, this particular example or any particular example for that matter is also a little optional. The reason why I say optional is in most cases or in my opinion, example should be used only once in the essay. So if you are using an example in paragraph 2, there is again an example in paragraph 3, then in this case you need not use an example in paragraph 3. Thus, do not needlessly keep on giving examples as it may make us believe that we are writing a lot but essentially we are not contributing enough to the essay. After having written the example, if you have any supplementary idea pertaining to the topic, then you can write down that as well. For example, a supplementary idea in this case could have been that due to resurgent government efforts, many art forms have become a little popular and the same has resulted in an increased employment in these particular art forms and thus art forms could also provide an alternate source of revenue and employment for a large number of people. Again, if you do not have a supplementary idea, you need not write it, it is optional in case if your main ideas and examples or elaboration is done in a smaller manner. After going through this, we now move on to paragraph 3. In paragraph 3, there are two aspects or two ways in which you can go about your paragraph 3. One is a supporting idea. Supporting idea would be whatever your main idea or opinion is, you're just carrying forth or you're just continuing that line of thought itself. For example, in this case of art forms, we can write a supporting ideas such as there are a large number of tourists who come up all over the globe to witness certain artistic monuments and certain art forms itself. And this could be a line of thought which could be for supporting idea. Although this is good, in many cases, which does not often have a lot of points, a lot of features that we can think about, this could become a problem. And hence, we can use an alternate method of contradictory idea. Now, when I say contradictory idea, it does not mean you have to start criticizing on the art forms. What I mean to say is, using this contradictory idea, you can provide an alternate school of thought or an alternate thought as to Yes, that arts are important or that particular topic is important, but also the other side is also has certain amount of importance. For example, the topic says that this money could be better spent elsewhere, elsewhere being the operative word. And now if we know or we just think about it, this elsewhere that it is mentioned that where the government could spend money is essentially public services or government services that the government provides such as roads, uh, healthcare agriculture or food security and whatnot. And again, these aspects are equally important and we can use the same in a contradictory idea. For example, we can write about this as there is a large number of people below the poverty line who are dependent on the government to provide these services for their sustenance. And to elaborate the same, we can talk about and if the government does not provide these essential public services or these people will be adversely impacted, which may lead to an upheaval or an imbalance in the society itself. So what we've done is we've given a contradictory idea, not contradicting our opinion itself, but providing an alternate thought. At the same time, we've also 
along with it elaborated that particular idea itself to provide certain metal or certain weight to whatever that alternate thought you have mentioned after doing this if you again have an example you may put an example but remember if i've taken or provided an example in my second paragraph i need not use an example again in the third paragraph also for the supplementary idea if you have a supplementary idea for the same it will behoove you or it will help your case if you provide any supplementary idea for example thus it is prudent for the government to take care of its population or the immediate or imminent needs of the populace before splurging money on other aspects having gone through the third paragraph or the structure for the third paragraph and having covered points for both the positive side as well as well as providing an alternate thought we now move on to our last paragraph which is often called the concluding paragraph in the concluding paragraph you essentially have to provide a one line summary which is nothing but not really being very very biased about any particular site but just capturing the essence of whatever it is that you wish to write for example and you can also back it up with your opinion which now needs to be a balanced view now this is the second place where you will use in my opinion i believe or whatever format of it and this first paragraph and the last paragraph are the only two places when you need to use your i or my or whatever the reason being i have often seen essays wherein people for every sentence keep writing i believe or i am of the view or i am of the opinion to increase the number of words trust me it makes us seem that we are working we are working harder but it does not really amount to anything and thus the usage of i or my opinion or in my belief or whatever needs to be limited to the first and the last paragraph itself and you can counter your summary or you can balance your summary with your opinion which again is a balanced view for example in this particular case you can write about thus the government needs to be very careful in allocating resources towards development of essential art forms at the same time it should not neglect the essential services and responsibilities that it needs to maintain in my opinion it is imperative that the government spends money on the art forms however it should not be at the cost of essential public services this quite nicely creates an entire layout of the essay itself where you have introduced your essay as well as your opinion may have given the layout of the essay if you really feel necessary and after which you've gone into the main idea or the reason or your opinion itself and provided a sound logical reasoning for whatever that opinion is you've also provided an example that you wish to give in support of the opinion or idea that you have and may also provide any supplementary idea if you think there is one or there is a linked idea or there is a tangential idea to the same in your paragraph 3 instead of just continuing in the same tone you could take an alternate thought and provide a contradictory idea or an alternate idea because this is not exactly contradictory it's just putting light on the other side of the argument as well this is also very essential as it just shows that you are a little logical or analytical in your approach itself and that you are able to provide two different schools of thoughts in the same essay and that does count to a certain amount while they will be marking your essays as it shows that the candidate is mature enough to be able to dabble in two contradictory or two separate schools of thought again the same thing we elaborate on this particular alternate thought or idea and provide an example only if i have not used an example over here if i have provided an example over here there is no need to write an example in this third paragraph as well again you may use a supplementary idea if you think there is an idea which is tangential to your alternate or contradictory idea itself after which in your fourth paragraph you can quickly summarize it in one line or two lines and provide your opinion again but this time your opinion will be a far balanced view instead of taking only one particular side for example as we did over here that it is very important for the government to spend money on arts however this particular template could be used for three types of essays that is agree or disagree advantages disadvantages as well as problem and solution we've already seen the structure or we've created an essay for agree and disagree the way it would work for the other two topics would be 
Your first paragraph still remains the same. The second paragraph could be for advantages about the topic or it could be addressing the problems which may be mentioned on that particular topic and the structure within this will still remain the same. You mention the problem or the advantages, you elaborate on them and you provide an example if possible. For paragraph 3, it could be the alternate thought as we said, wherein you could write a little bit about the disadvantages or give throw light on solutions pertaining to that particular topic and again you can write about it, you can elaborate on the same and you can provide an example or a supplementary idea if there is one that persists. Thus, this particular template can be used for the first three topics. For places or for topics which is on discuss or which give a situation, problem and a solution, you can simply expand this four paragraph essay into a five paragraph essay. And the way to do this would be to introduce or add one more paragraph over here which probably would address again a certain set. Let's look at it. For example, for a problem solution or a situation problem and solution topic, the paragraph 2 could be about the situation itself, talking about the situation and elaborating an explanation of the same and giving an example or a supplementary idea. Paragraph 3 could now become the topic for or the paragraph for the problems and you can discuss the problems and outline the features and explain the same. You can now introduce a paragraph 4 over here which would be the paragraph wherein you address the solutions or talk about the features of the solutions that you propose and you can elaborate on the same and so on and so forth. And in, now in this particular discuss essay or a situation problem and a solution essay or a two part essay, your earlier fourth paragraph now becomes the fifth paragraph and again you will conclude in the same manner that we have done previously. Thus, there is not a lot of tweaking involved with regards to if you need to write a five paragraph essay, you can still essentially have the same skeleton or the same structure to even write a five paragraph essay. In this manner, you can address or using this structure, you can address all the types of task two essays or writing task two essays on your IELTS examination. Having understood the common problems and solutions, the types of essays, and now the structure itself and also solving an example using the same structure, we now move on to our next task which would be the writing task 1 for IELTS Academic.